When you're inspecting a home or a building for buying and selling, one of your top priorities, right after the structural integrity of the building, should be electrical fire safety. For this reason, you must inspect the breaker panel, such as this here. Inspection is fairly straightforward, naked eye inspection, what I'm talking about. In this video, I give you a few pointers on what to look for and what they might mean. This is not a course in electrical engineering, home inspections or electrical inspections. Just a few pointers that you as a homeowner can do. Now, given the fact that most home inspectors are fairly incompetent and would give you a $1,500 bill after 20 minutes worth of work, or maybe one hour if you stretch it, you might not want to entirely rely on that. Home inspectors only have to go through a six, four week, six week legal certification. And certification is not the same word as training. In four weeks, six weeks, or whatever long this legal certification is, is there is no room for in-depth studies. Okay, so these are some pointers that you can do yourself for your own safety. What you're looking for on a breaker panel such as this is any evidence of renovations, alterations, tampering, and adding circuits. The problem with all of these, or any of these, is that, you see, the breaker panel was originally designed, approved, and inspected by the city. And there is a paper trail, paper evidence, showing that. It's the wire sizes leading to these circuit breakers have been meticulously designed to take the loads that the building was designed for and they work. It doesn't matter how old this is, it only has like 10 circuits or so. It's from 1971, fairly old, but it works safely with the wires that were installed and manufactured in 1971 or so. So, that's the original circuit breaker, but if there are additions, changes, renovations, alterations to it, it's important that those be done safely. Usually, that's not the case. Usually, how additions and renovations are done is uh, patch on patch on patch on patch, and circuits get overloaded, and those overloaded circuits heat up, and those lead to electrical fires. Now, it may not have led to an electrical fire for the previous homeowner, but it may for you, the new homeowner, who doesn't know about the quirks of the building. Or the original design loads on the original number of circuits. Now, the seller may only have a dog and a single TV, but if you have five kids, power tools to run, uh, kids running electronics, and somebody always working in the kitchen uh, among half a dozen minor appliances, you might be overloading the circuits, and you might be overloading some of the patched-in circuits that are spliced on spliced on spliced into existing junction boxes and branched off from light switches and weird places. So, uh, having a house fire, electrical house fire, and living outside of your home for any length of time is no fun. The only way that you can have any proof that nobody's tampered with the original number of circuits and the original design loads on those circuits is to take a close look. First thing, how is the paint? Are there any scratch marks on the paint? Anything that, sh that tells you that it's been uh, dropped and bent and somebody worked on it? Are there any screws missing? In this case there are screws missing, but that's because this whole breaker panel is being replaced and that's also why the drywall is missing there. How is the paint fading and color? Is it consistent with the nameplate and the age of the building? In this case, this is a 1971 building and a 1971 breaker panel with a fading on it that looks like 1971. But when you look at the breakers, breakers themselves, there you have a 30 amp breaker for the dryer, a 40 amp breaker for the range or cooker, depending on where you live and how you name those. Everything else should be 15 amp breakers and all should be consistently same plastic with the same age. Now you can see two of them here are different. 
this one is different and this one is different plastic not only not 15 amps 20 amps so the questions you should be asking what happened here and here why are those different now at this point you might hear an explanation as to why this breaker is different from all the others such as the breaker broke and a 15 amp breaker was replaced by an identical single phase 15 amp breaker that's how the new ones look like and uh, that's the end of the story it just needed replacement and that might very well be the case but the only way to ascertain that is to have a look inside the wires yourself so bring a screwdriver just a single screwdriver and take out those four screws that hold this cover plate here you can do this safely as long as you don't touch anything inside looking only like I said visual observations absolutely no poking no touching okay so when you take a look at the insides here you can see that the 1971 jacketing on the cables have this silvery finish and the cables themselves have this paper insulation there my finger is against the lens I'm not putting my finger inside the breaker panel I'm at least a foot away from it so you can see the same silver colored wires there on this side and if you follow the wire this one exiting this breaker here the black wire there goes up comes down you can see it goes into a a wire that has a silver jacketing and this paper insulation in it you can see it is indeed a 1971 wire so most likely or at this point at the breaker here there were no changes no alterations no additions no tempering done to this side of the breaker panel there on the other side however the story changes you can see that some of the wires have this paper insulation showing on the inside so far so good but when you get down here you can see that the lowest one is blue and the one above it this one is an armor cable so the question you should be asking at this point is what are those two where are they leading what are the loads on those circuits who inspected those where is proof of inspection and approval so let's follow that blue jacketed wire potentially unsafe and problematic on this breaker panel because it's being replaced we have the rare opportunity of following it and looking at uh, the other side of the breaker panel in the laundry room where we can see what it's actually doing as it's exiting here we have even more blue wire so you can see this was made this jacketing is from the mid 80s that's when these wires were placed in here and the suspicious looking tiny bit of blue jacketing verifies that there are more problems with this circuit you can see that out of this junction box there's one wire exiting but another three leading into it why is it a three into one it's illegal it's abnormal it's not usual customary or sane usually every wire should have its own breaker why wasn't a breaker added to each of these wires when it's so easy to expand or it was in the 80s so easy to expand the breaker panel it could have been easily done so this one's gonna go I'm gonna remove it out of service or it's gonna be removed together with the whole breaker panel everything is gonna be rewired here let's see where these blue wires go two of them go up the wall that way and one of them goes down there now there's an outlet in here and it's possible that it's not a not an original outlet could have been added at a renovation after the fact but what exactly was renovated in the 80s here to find it out it's very simple switch everything on everywhere in the house all of the lights uh, all of the fans let them make noise everything is on the red why the red light is glowing there everything is on there's a bathroom here let's find out what's being powered by that circuit which already has a 20 amp breaker on it which is which looks like that it's been willfully added there purposefully knowingly that it's gonna be three wires wired into one it's, it's not an accident so when we turn it off what goes out 
this light is still on we just plugged into that outlet down there so that outlet is original that light is original that light is original that one is original that one is original and yeah that went out and everything in the bathroom the bathroom is a new addition so there we have it. The bathroom was also built in the 80s. None of this was ever designed to be here, approved to be here, or inspected to be here. I guarantee you that. There is no evidence of plumbing inspection ever being done on this. And plumbing inspection is just one thing, an electrical inspection. How was it put together as a structure? Is there evidence of mold in here? And this could be a major source of discomfort and expense. Asbestos remedi remediation, mold remediation, ripping everything out, this could be a $10,000 uh, hole in the budget right away. And we discovered it just based on a quarter inch or five millimeters of blue jacketing at the corner of the breaker panel right there. So you see once you see something that's out of place, chances are that everything else that belongs to it as a system is also out of place. Let me just switch it back on. On, uh, So this could be, again, a price renegotiation point, or you might just want to flee and not look back. This armor cable, just to let you know, I installed it and I installed 18 light bulbs like this. So they are not threaded. They are this G socket, GU10 socket light bulbs, four and a half watts each. So when all 18 of them are going, that draws a total of 0 0.6 amps and it's going onto its own 15 amp breaker. So that's fine. And these bulbs, because of their GU10 socket, these are not threaded bulbs. They, you cannot upgrade them to a halogen or any other thing that the socket can't take those in so you know so there's no way you can draw a larger load than the 0 0.6 amps on this on this circuit so that's fine and uh, and anybody else willing to pull out the sockets and actually look at the connections will find nothing wrong all along so that's what i wanted to share with you this is how electrical inspection can look like and I just want to show you what happens when you dig a little deeper than uh, or actually have the ability to follow through what happens when you see just a little bit of um, a sign that something is out of place or something is out of possibly code that's what happens thank you for watching